Well, hey there, friendships. Welcome back to Curtis's Corner. If you are new here, hi, I'm Curtis. This is my corner, and on today's Film Friday video, we are going to be discussing none other than The Green Knight. I've got some things to say about this film, so we're going to roll the intro, and we're going to just uh, dive right into it. So buckle up and keep on watching. The Green Knight, which came out at the end of July 2021, stars Dev Patel, Alicia Vikander, Joel Edgerton, and a few other cast members as well. This film, I have just a mix of emotions with it. When I saw the trailer for it, I was expecting it to be like the next big fantasy thing. I had a feeling it was just going to be a one-off movie not spawning off like a franchise, which it is supposed to be. It's just supposed to be a one-off. But the trailers make it look so much more exciting than it actually is. The storyline is very dry, very, mm, not very, slightly convoluted. The visuals in the film are extremely wonderful. Um, they kind of play with what you're thinking. They're beautiful to look at. So you get that wonderful, that's like a 10 out of 10 for me for visual. The CGI that's in it could use a bit of work because you could really 100% tell that it was CGI. The acting was okay. I would say the acting on a scale of 1 to 10 is probably about like a 6, 7. Storyline I would say is about a 4, 5. Um, the ending is about a two. <laughs> it's just, it's so dumb. And the whole, the runtime is two hours. It's 130 minutes, okay? They could have condensed this movie. They could have gotten rid of 40 minutes of that. It could have been an hour and like 25 minutes. If you need to do an hour and a half. Because most of the movie was literally... Dev Patel's character of Gawain on a horse and or walking. That's it. They made a story from like the 1400s that could have been read in a couple hours that should have been, if you were making it into a movie, should have been at most an hour and a half and decided to add 30 minutes of walking. I'm not even joking. The first 30 minutes set it up to be pretty good. Okay? But actually, no, not even the first 30 minutes. It was the first, like, 15 minutes set up the movie to be pretty good. I was buckled in. I was ready for it. Then the next 15 minutes came, and he was just already started just... He was just walking on his horse, traveling across... I know he has to take six days or six nights, whatever, to actually get to this place that he's going. But oh, oh, not good. You feel every minute go by in this film. It's very slow paced while also being quick at the same time. Like it's like he's walking for five to ten minutes and then it's night and then spending a lot of time at night. And then it's back to daytime, and he's walking again, and then it's back to night. So, basically, the story of this Green Knight and Gawain is Dev Patel plays Gawain. He's one of the knights of the round table in this story. However, in the film adaptation, he's not actually a knight yet. He attended a party with a king and a queen, and the king invited him up to sit with him and talk and you don't actually get really anything you just think okay he's a nice king when i looked up the actual story that this movie was based off of the king was king arthur and gawain is arthur's nephew no one had any name in this except for gawain he was the only character with a name but the fact that you don't, ha you only have a character with a name, you have the king and the queen, 
which is supposed to be Arthur and Guinevere, but you don't mention their names literally at all. There's this random woman who has a blindfold around. There's, like, things to do with witches. After looking up the story, I get what they were going for, but to me, they didn't quite meet it. They did not meet the expectation that it could have been. It's just, it wasn't that great of a film, and I'm honestly, I'm really disappointed in it because I was looking forward to seeing this film. <sighs> the ending is very retconny as well. In case you want to see it just because of the visuals or if you are a Dev Patel fan, he does a, an all right job in this film. I've seen him do better, Slumdog Millionaire as an example. But the symbolism that's in this film is basically, it's all having to do with um, inner struggle and trying to be loyal or chivalrous or just, you know, a decent human. And Gawain is going through trying to get to this um, green chapel that this green knight is waiting for him because he accepts the green knight's challenge at the beginning of the film to strike him down. Now, in the story, he was supposed to take the green knight's axe and behead him, but in the film, he ends up using King Arthur's sword. They changed that a little bit. Otherwise, the night, how he comes into the room, what he does, how he leaves, all of that is pretty much the same. The ending, slightly different as well, where, you know, in the story, he's doing one thing in the chapel when Gawain finally shows up, but in the film, he's doing a different thing. And then how the film ends, I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but it's like they show one ending and then they kind of retcon it within the last, like, minute, and then imply another ending. They don't even give you a proper ending. It just, you're just left to be like, so did it happen or did, did it not happen? You assume it happened because of the final words that are said, but it's like, did it though? But the last, and I'm not joking, the last 18 minutes. And I'm saying 18 because I'm saying the two minutes to like retcon the ending. The final 18 minutes was silence. Background music, sounds of people running by or like, you know, they're in the middle of a war. So things are blowing up. People are getting killed. You hear the background noises of just war, but no character is talking. Not a single one. So that just makes those 18 minutes really go by extremely slowly. Was not happy about that either. Long story short, <laughs> will I be getting this film? If I do, $5 or less. <laughs> I'm glad I did not pay to go and see this. I'm glad that I saw it online. Boy, oh boy, was it not good. So, my rating for The Green Knight is a D. It had a lot of potential. They could have gone so many places with it. They could have done so much with it. And they chose not to. And on top of that, I mean, I've never heard of the director before, but apparently he's doing the next live action Peter and Wendy that's coming out next year. Um, but it's by the studio A24, which gave us Hereditary and The Witch and Midsummer, and Enemy. How do you make such good films and then produce this garbage? I don't, I don't get it. But anyways, that is my review. Hopefully you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on it. If you did, please make sure you give it a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I put out weekly videos and hit that notification bell because if you don't, how else are you going to know when I post a brand new video? You won't. So do it. I am now going to see you, actually, in... I'll see you in two hours, my friends, so that way we can do a second Film Friday review. But until then, goodbye, friendships.